Is coding still worth it in 2025? With AI tools like Claude, ChatGPT and Cursor writing code and companies investing heavily in automation, many are questioning the value of starting their coding journey. As a software developer with almost a decade of experience and having trained hundreds of developers, I'll discuss the current job market, how AI is influencing coding careers, and provide you with a roadmap for your coding journey this year. So let's cut through the noise and examine the tech landscape in 2024 and 2025. In 2024, the US tech sector employed 9.5 million people, and there are expected with projections to reach 9.5 million people in 2025. Despite this growth, 280,000 people have been laid off globally, with US accounting for half of this layoffs. So even though more and more developers are using AI tools in their workflow, you need to be aware of two things. The first one is complexity. And when I'm talking about complexity, I'm talking about the fact that every application that is used worldwide or internally in a company is becoming more and more complex. The way I see an application is like a living organism or more likely like a painting. A painting is never done. It's just the artist that decides to finish the painting. What I mean by that is the fact that a lot of applications have been built already. There is a huge demand to increase what these applications can do, the scope of this application. More and more developers will be needed to work on this application. Now let's look at the real impact of AI. So a lot of people are making the point of AI completely automating the job of a software developer. And in my opinion, if that is to happen, then every other job that requires a computer is gonna be automated. If that is the case, then I mean, we'll have other problems to deal with than writing code. So far, we had man versus man in a competition. And right now we are getting into the era of man and machine versus man and machine. AI is an enhancer. If we get to the point where we have machine versus machine, then everything we know about capitalism is gonna be gone. And again, as I said, we have other things to worry about. Now, if we talk about AI as an enhancer, I always said that any AI tool that you use is a multiplier of your skill sets. If you're a complete beginner, yes, you can make a lot of progress really fast and you might have this false sense of competence. But as soon as you start to build something that is supposed to solve a problem from the real world, you start to have problems. The problem with the fact that you have problems is that you cannot really define what the problem is. You don't really know exactly what you're dealing with because you are lacking experience, because you are lacking uh, understanding and you are lacking skills. Even though AI might make you really good really fast as a beginner, you will start to realize that you actually need a solid foundation because again, if AI is a multiplier, you want to get your skill level as far as possible or as close as possible to 10 out of 10 because if you get to that 10 out of 10, then you can use these AI tools to their full power and you won't feel this false sense of competency, if that makes sense. You'll actually be competent. And another shift that I see coming in 2025 and beyond this year is that there will be a lot of need for developers that can integrate these AI APIs into existing applications. A lot of companies are trying to stay competitive and relevant by integrating these AI tools in their existing software. So what does this mean to you as a beginner that is looking to get into tech? There is a lower barrier to entry into this field than it has ever been before. If you know how to use AI to learn, then you can have a competitive edge over people who don't use it. But you have to be careful about how you use these tools. I've made a video that should be linked somewhere here because if you use AI the wrong way, you'll get that sense of confidence that is not real and you'll bottleneck your learning and earning capacity. Due to the fact that there is a lower barrier of entry, the standard for what a good developer is in 2025 has raised quite a lot, okay? So in life, we always have this balance between yin and yang. Okay, so if there is a lower barrier to entry in this field, that means the level that you need to get at is getting higher and higher. What I see nowadays, and if you saw any of my portfolio reviews, is that people have not changed their standard. Their standard is still at 2015 and they're wondering why they can't get jobs. And another thing that you need to be aware of more than ever is that there are no junior developer jobs available. In my opinion, there were never junior developer jobs available 
and I want you to remove this idea from your head that I want to get a junior developer job. And the reason why there are no junior developer jobs is because nobody has the budget to train someone who doesn't know anything. Nobody has the budget to mentor you. Nobody has the budget to coach you. Nobody has the budget to take care of you. You need to train yourself with the resources that you have available right now because you have plenty of them. You need to use all these resources to become as capable as possible before you even get the job and you have to demonstrate this with the portfolio projects that you build. Every field that you want to get into is extremely competitive. If you need mentorship, guidance and support in your coding journey, click on the first link in the description and apply for the mentorship. Now, in this part of this video, I want to advise you regarding the languages that you should learn if you wanna make it in tech. The way you choose your language is by choosing the field that you wanna get into. So if you wanna become a front-end developer, you need to choose one particular language. If you wanna uh, create applications for mobile, then you need to learn a different type of language. If you wanna create AI, because that's what you are interested in, you need to choose a different type of language. I have identified three languages that I think are worth their salt, and those are JavaScript. In my opinion, JavaScript is the most versatile language, not because I'm selling a mentorship that teaches JavaScript, but because it gives you the most amount of flexibility. So you can get a job, freelance, you can build your own application, you can build websites, you can build web applications, you can build mobile applications, you can build servers, you can build native applications. It gives you the most amount of flexibility. It's not the most geek friendly, okay? But it's very flexible, as I mentioned, and it's relatively easy to learn compared with the other languages that are available. The second language that I think it's worth its salt, it's Python. Python is really great because, again, it's easy to learn and it is the gateway towards uh, creating AI and whatnot, okay? But I want you to understand that there is a difference between being a programmer and being an AI developer. And the third language that I have identified that, you know, pretty much everyone is talking about is Java. It's a very old language. There are a lot of jobs that are available for Java developers and I think you should look into it. Another thing that I want to mention here is that if you choose one field, let's say you choose front-end, and if you don't like it, you can always switch to back-end, okay? And if you don't like back-end, you can always switch to mobile app development. You are not stuck with a decision. You can always change your mind based on your experience uh, working in that field. Do not change front-end to back-end or back-end to, uh, I don't know, mobile app development just because this thing that you've chosen is hard because all of these disciplines are hard in their own way. Now, another skill that goes together with these languages or with this language that you're about to choose is problem solving. So problem solving is one of those skills that is so meta and it's very hard to define. But the way I see problem solving is by understanding first what problem you are trying to solve and then having the ability to define that problem in a specific way, either to make a query on Google or to make a query on the interface of the AI tools that you wanna use. Being able to understand the problem that you're dealing with and being able to ask a question or to define the problem that you're dealing with, that is what problem solving means. Do not stress if you are not the best problem solver. I don't think there is such thing as the best problem solver, but you need to understand that you start from scratch and you need some time until you learn how to problem solve, because again, it's a skill and it takes time. Now, if you wanna stay relevant in 2025 as a developer, especially as a junior developer, Here's what I would do. Start building a real world application. All of you, including myself and including my students, start with building, you know, the classic application. If you want to become a front-end developer, you know what I'm talking about. So we have the calculator, we have the weather app, we have the Pokemon search thing. Those applications are totally fine if you're a beginner because you need to learn your skills, right? You need to understand what you're doing and you need these toy applications to understand how you know this language works or how this library or framework works but at some point you need to say okay enough is enough i need to build something big enough to scare me and big enough to impress a developer or a hiring manager or a recruiter there are many ways to come up with these applications but you need to have this commitment and say okay i'm going to spend the next three to six months building one application only. This is the only way for you to get experience, to get a bunch of exposure to a bunch of new technologies, to actually 
see how it is to work on a large code base because if you have been in this game for some time okay and you've built applications you know how the more you build an application the more files you add and the more files you add and the more code you write the more you need to learn how to manage all these pieces that come together to build this application and then guess what when you will get a job okay because if you do these things you will get a job you'll be working in in a company that has an application that's been up and running for years and there are hundreds and hundreds of applications thousands and thousands of lines of code dozens of developers have been working on application you need to try to replicate that environment in your own home in your own apartment so then when you get a job you'll be able to hit the ground running now in my opinion you should also start practicing algorithms okay so there are platforms like lead code or code wars i prefer code wars it's a bit more straightforward if you get to level five out of eight so it starts at level eight when you're at level eight you're a noob when you're level one you're a total nerd if you get to level five that means you are a decent algorithm solver i'm not uh, a fan of lead code but a lot of people recommend it so you might also want to look into that but if you want something less hardcore code wars is the platform that you should go for at some point start either a youtube channel or a twitter account or a linkedin account and become an influencer if you want to be someone in the future you need to have some sort of online presence it's gonna be your online resume yeah, think about it. All these guys that you see online posting about the projects they are making or they are reacting to different content, they have eyeballs on them. At some point, if they will need a job or they need to get onto an opportunity or whatever, people will go to them first, okay? Because people know them. So you want to create some sort of online persona because otherwise you are a nobody. I have changed my mind since last year where I said you shouldn't do this. And I'm telling you this because I think it's gonna help you. So feel free to do with this information whatever you want. I think coding is still relevant in 2025 and it's still gonna be relevant for a very long time. I think this job is gonna change and I think only the creme de la creme is gonna be rewarded. So I think in the future, maybe in the next two, three years, we won't see any more lower paying jobs like under $200,000 if you're in the US, but I think we'll see more people that are making half a million per year or more, but these people will have more responsibilities than ever. My advice to you is to stay sharp, be trained as much as possible on whatever field you're choosing. Try to be the top dog, try to be uh, known by everybody especially if you follow my advice of becoming an influencer and someone that is important in your field you don't need to say like hey guys this is my tiktok these are three tips to be a better developer you don't need to do that of course you don't have to do that you can find your own voice and your own way of saying things but if you follow this advice i know you'll be making a lot of money you can make whatever you want these days there are more opportunities than ever we are living in the best time of humanity if you really think about it when you are beginning your journey right now it doesn't seem like that it seems like there is a lot of fear mongering and i get it I don't want to be in your shoes because I know how it used to be for me and now it seems like it's even worse. But if you look at the tech landscape with a clear mind, you can see that there are more opportunities than ever. Maybe these opportunities don't look the same as they used to look like four years ago, but the opportunities are there and you have to be smart enough to figure out how to get these opportunities and make the most of what you have right now so i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to learn how to get a remote developer job click on this video either here or here let me know what you think in the comments peace out